If there's one thing to be certain of this summer, Jose Mourinho is going to be very busy once again. He's had two summers now as a Manchester United manager, but from the way he's talking, he's clearly not happy with how the squad still is. He's a buying manager. He always has been. A Man United will buy in the summer. We'll also sell. So what I want to do is run through who I would keep in the current Manchester United squad and who I would sell in the summer and see if you disagree with me. So first on the list, David De Gea. He's not going to go anywhere. There's no way I would sell him, no matter how much money Real Madrid throw at us. Man United have somehow managed to hold on to David De Gea over the last few years, and we've had Moyes, we've had Van Gaal. De Gea stuck around, and this season, I think he is undoubtedly the world's best goalkeeper. United fans have been saying it for a, for a couple of years now that he is one of the best, but he has been the best this year. So I would absolutely keep him at the club. And I would keep Sergio Romero as well. I'm not sure there are many better number twos in world football than Sergio Romero. Rarely plays, but when he does, he comes in and he does a job. Look at United in the Europa League last year. Mourinho kept faith in Romero. I would absolutely keep him in the squad too. Just like I would Joel Castro Pereira, the young Portuguese goalkeeper, came through our academy teams and Mourinho seems to have taken a liking to him. He's ahead of Sam Johnston, certainly, in terms of the pecking order at Manchester United. That's why I would let Sam Johnston go. You know, he's had a couple of loan spells at Aston Villa. He's still young enough to make a long, long career for himself, just like Ben Foster did elsewhere, just like Thomas Kusjak did elsewhere. United have got so many good goalkeepers in the current squad that I would let Sam Johnson go and I would keep Joel Castro Pereira because I think he could be a fantastic goalkeeper for the future. Now, in defence, I certainly think there will be a few players being sold by Jose Mourinho this summer. I certainly wouldn't sell Victor Lindelof. Now, it's been a tough season for him since he moved from Benfica. He's struggled to adapt to the pace of the Premier League. Some of his better performances may have come in the Europa League. But I back Jose Mourinho's decision to sign Lindelof to be correct. And that's why I would keep him in the squad, just like I would keep Eric Bailly, undoubtedly United's best centre-back, easily. You know, a real superb signing by United scouts to bring him in, was it two summers ago now? And it's such a real shame that he's had so many injury problems this year because United's problems, not just in defence, because technically we've got a good defensive record. It's more the fact that we've struggled without Lindelof and Bailly because Jones, Rojo and Smalling, Rojo's hardly played at all, they can't play out from the back with the ball and it completely changes United's style of play. For us to really progress next year, we need two ball-playing centre-backs who are capable of bringing the ball out from the back and by, fingers crossed, he doesn't get injured that much next year because we absolutely need him in the team. Now, one player I would actually keep instead of being sold is Phil Jones. This year, he's actually been outstandingly good when he's not been injured. It's just that the injuries come in and ruin it again. And we've said that probably for the last four or five years. But I would give Jones one more chance. I've seen enough from him to think that he could do a job in this United team if he remained fit. And if and if he doesn't remain fit, he's good enough to bolster our centre-back options. And Marcus Rojo, I keep him as well. And United have just renewed his contract, so I can't imagine he is going anywhere anytime soon. I was wrong about Rojo. He was one of the first players I would have sold when Jose Mourinho became United manager. Then he turned into a fantastic centre-back under Mourinho. Real Mourinho type player. I think Rojo is going to be here for a while. One player who I don't think should be here next year is Chris Smalling. And this is not just because it's a witch hunt against Chris Smalling. I'm going to go back to the point I made about ball playing centre backs. It's not necessarily things that Chris Smalling does wrong that fill me with a lack of confidence in him as a player for Manchester United. It's more what he doesn't do. You know, he doesn't walk out of defence with the ball very well at his feet. He's not very comfortable in possession. He seems nervous. He makes the players around him nervous. He makes me nervous, and I'm not even a player on the pitch. And those are the things I don't want to have in my centre-back at Manchester United. And that is exactly why I would let Chris Smalling go. I think he probably peaked as a player under Louis van Gaal in that season where he was fantastic. But I think those times have gone. And Chris Smalling is, what, 28, 29 now? It's not potential anymore. That's the final product. And for me, it's not good enough. And I don't want Chris Smalling at the club next year. I think we can replace him with somebody better. I don't think Daley Blind should be at Manchester United either. Blind was signed from Ajax. I remember he signed as a defensive midfield position. That's where he won player of the year at Ajax. And he was fantastic. He, he played in a position, in a role that United had not had a good player in some time. May have made Blind look better than he was. But as an auxiliary centre-back and left-back, 
blended very well. He turned into a more of a John O'Shea type player, playing defensive mid, left, bit, left back, left wing back, centre back. Blin played wherever United needed him. And he's been a very good player in that respect. But I think Man United can let Blin go for the good of his career as well, because he's young enough to have a lot more years under his belt, but he's not going to get that at Manchester United. And I feel, just like Chris Smalling, we could replace Blind with a better alternative. And the same goes for Ashley Young. I would sell Ashley Young this summer. I don't. Th I think, no matter how good Ashley Young has been playing, which he has been, look at how well he played against Mohamed Salah, United can get a better player in that position rather than a right winger turn into a left back because Mourinho doesn't have faith in Luke Shaw. United can do better than that. A full back is a specialist position in the modern game. Probably the hardest position in, in football as far as I'm concerned. The amount, of, the amount you've got to run up and down the wing, be able to defend and help with attacks. You need an insane amount of fitness. And I just don't think Ashley Young has got the full package. His crosses, because he cuts back inside, his crosses are whipped in. So for the runner, Lukaku, who can get there in front of a defender, it's not that sort of cross. He cuts back and then it's all static in the box. And therefore, Lukaku can't get the power behind it because it's a static position. That comes from Young's type of crossing. We need a left back, a left footed left back playing there. And I think for me, that should be Luke Shaw. And that's why I'm keeping him in the squad next year. But this is a personal opinion. Clearly, Mourinho has got something personal against Luke Shaw. And I'm not sure whether he will be here next year. But for me, I would keep him. I think if we let Luke Shaw go and someone like Spurs sign him up, what Shaw become the best left back in the Premier League in two, three years' time? I, without a doubt, he's still got the talent. He just needs somebody to get it out of him. And I thought Mourinho did, but then obviously he decided to publicly criticise him again, took him off at half-time again, and we seem to have gone a step backwards with Luke Shaw. But for me, on a personal level, I would keep Shaw next summer. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments below. Someone else I would keep is Timothy Fosu Mensa, an excellent loan spell he's had at Crystal Palace. And he has all the capabilities of being an outstanding right back for Manchester United and probably a defensive midfielder. It's actually the position I enjoyed watching him the most for the academy teams, but doesn't look like he's going to be getting much game time there at United because it's a hard position to develop. You need to be a specialist in that role. Whereas right back, I think he could be a great backup to Antonio Valencia until Antonio Valencia leaves and then Fosu Mensa can step into that role. I think that would be perfect and I'd like to see United do that. Now, somebody who absolutely has to be leaving the club in the summer is Matteo Darmian, a very, as far as I'm concerned, limited defender. You know, his best performance for United probably came in that Europa League final where he was actually outstanding. But Darmian, when he joined, he was on a level with Hector Bellerin. They were both exceedingly good at right back in the start of that season. But he really tailed off. And ever since then, Darmian, for me, has never properly recovered. That is why I would let him leave the club. Someone I would certainly keep at the club, though, is Axel Tuanzebe. Currently on loan at Aston Villa, he's an outstanding centre-back, an outstanding leader. Was for the under-18s, was for the under-23s. I think he can be for the first team as well. You saw last year when he came in, played against away at Arsenal, away at Spurs. He played well, filling in in a what, defensive midfield role, I think it was, and at right-back. But Tuanzebe is a centre-back. If you take Smalling out of the team, you take Blind out of the team, all of a sudden you're starting to get opportunities for Tuan Zebe and I'd like to see him kept at the club next year. Someone I do think will leave unfortunately is Cameron Borthwick Jackson. I remember when he made, did he make his debut away at Liverpool? I certainly remember him coming on in that game and he was fantastic. But like the likes of Tyler Blackett, Paddy McNair, there's certain youngsters who made a debut underneath Louis van Gaal that never kicked on to become a regular first team player for Manchester United. I think Borthwick Jackson that's going to be the case with him. So I think he will be sold in the summer. Now, moving on to midfield, one player we're obviously going to be keeping is Paul Pogba. You know, at points this year, he's been magical. At other points, he's let games pass him by. What we need to see from Pogba next year is somebody who properly dominates games, who consistently dominates games. We're not asking for Pogba to get a goal or an assist every game, but just run that midfield. He's got, he's got everything he needs to be a world-class midfielder. Someone like Patrick Vieira, who's just bossing the midfield, defending and attacking. That's what Paul Pogba can do. That's what he's capable of. That's why United paid 90 million to bring him back from Juventus. And I think next year, he will be outstanding. I think he's been very good this year, but I'd certainly keep him. And I would keep Juan Mata as well. Mata has drifted in and out of this Manchester United team, but especially in the last few weeks when he's drifted back in, we've realised how much we've missed Juan Mata in the team. With everybody around him, Sanchez, Lukaku, Lingard, Martial, Rashford, 
all pacey players, direct players who run at defences and that's how they open up defences. Juan Mata's different. He's a possession-based, cultured footballer that can link the players together. And that's what we've been missing. That's why I think he's been so good. And I absolutely will keep him at the club next year. I'd also keep Andreas Pereira. He's obviously on loan at Valencia, a full season long loan. Typically when players are sent out for a full season, they don't really come back and get a position in the squad. I remember at the start of the year, everyone's like, oh look, keep Pereira in the squad. Mourinho can give him some game time. Mourinho decided against that and sent him to Valencia where he has done very well. Valencia have been sensational this season in comparison to last year. Pereira has all the capabilities of being a fantastic number 10 type player for United. And I do think his talent warrants a full season at Manchester United underneath Mourinho, at least one full season anyway. And I would keep Ander Herrera too. Now some may disagree with that because of what they've seen from Herrera this year, but I remember the year before, I saw captain qualities from Ander Herrera. I think with a positional change this year, with Matic coming in and Herrera not playing more as a defensive midfielder, He's struggled to adapt and cope with that. He hasn't played that much. And when you're playing in any position in football, if you're not playing week in, week out, it's hard to be consistent. But for me, I would keep Herrera in the squad. I've seen enough from him over the years that I would like to keep him. Again, let me know whether you agree in the comments. One player I would absolutely sell is Marouane Fellaini. And just like Chris Smalling, this has nothing to do with the witch hunt. This is to do with what, how I feel Manchester United play with and without Marouane Fellaini. Fellaini, if you use him correctly, he's a good asset. And by that, I mean don't start him in central midfield in any way, shape or form. Bring him on for the last 20, 25 minutes when plan A isn't working, play him as a number 10, get balls up to him. That's what Everton did so well. That's when Fellaini was dangerous. Mourinho starting him in central midfield over the likes of McTominay and Matic sometimes. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Fellaini is a limited footballer in that regard. And because I don't think Mourinho will ever use him in the way I feel he should be used week in, week out, if you are going to use him as a sub for the last 20 minutes to change a game, that's why I'd like to see Fellaini sold. If we kept him and used him in that way, I think he could be an asset. I just can't see it happening. For me, that's why I would let him go. Somebody else I would keep though, obviously, is Nemanja Matic. Been an outstanding signing for Manchester United this year. Brilliant for the first three months. Tailed off for two, three months after that, but really is coming back into form now we're getting into the business end of the season. Not that there's much to play for as far as United are concerned anyway. But Matic absolutely would keep him. And McTominay, breakthrough player this year for Manchester United, really showing that he's got a mature head on his shoulders. And for me, Matic is a perfect role model for McTominay. If he can play underneath Matic for another year, another two years, and really learn that position from one of the best in the game, perfect way for McTominay to become a fantastic player for United and stay in the squad for some time. So I think McTominay will be staying next year. Mourinho clearly likes him. Now moving on to the attack, Alexis Sanchez. Of course, I'm going to keep Alexis Sanchez. And for me, this season, he's just been struggling to adapt in this role. He's gone from left wing to number 10 to right wing to moving as a supporting striker. It doesn't really seem like Sanchez knows his role properly in this team. And I'll be honest, I don't think Mourinho knows it either. That's why we haven't been getting the best out of Sanchez. But we know how good he was at Arsenal, how good he was at Barcelona and Udinese. He will be that good for United next year, and I can't wait to see what happens there. And obviously, I'm going to be keeping Romelu Lukaku on for scoring 30 goals in his debut season. You know, Morata, so much was said about him being signed. So much was said about Aubameyang, about Lacazette. But for me, Lukaku's been the outstanding striker signing in the Premier League this year. And not much has actually been said about it. Say what you want about Lukaku, but for me, he's been outstanding this year. And I'm not sure we could have asked for that much more. Yes, certain big games he could have stepped up in, but for me, Lukaku has been brilliant this year. Now, Martial, I'm not letting him go anywhere, anytime soon. We need to be keeping Martial in this squad. Still has the ability and the capability of becoming world class. We've seen that a lot more this season than we saw last year. I would absolutely be keeping him in the squad, just like I would Jesse Lingard. Maybe he's a breakthrough star. Certainly up there with McTominay, nobody expected Lingard to have the goal scoring season that he is having. And it's a testament to Jose Mourinho. He has brought that out of Jesse Lingard. From scoring in the FA Cup final, from scoring goals at Wembley galore, to scoring away at Arsenal. He has scored important goals for Manchester United and plenty of them. And I would absolutely keep him in the squad. Do you agree with that? Let me know in the comments below. Now Marcus Rashford, he's not going anywhere. Absolutely not. So I think United attack 
I'm not sure there's anybody I would let go from it. And I think that goes to show that that's a strength in this current squad. There's defenders we need to get rid of. There's midfielders that we can let go as well. But our attack, it looks good. Two players who obviously won't be here next year as Latan Ibrahimovic and Michael Carrick. They are both going to be released. Michael Carrick is obviously stepping down, going to go into a coaching role at Manchester United. Fantastic in that. But it sounds like Ibrahimovic is going to be released from Man United. Right decision as well. The injury really has probably ended his career. We all thought it might. He didn't want it to. He came back ridiculously quick and early. And maybe he will have an impact between now and the end of the season. But I think at the end of the season, it is time to let Ibrahimovic go. And that does create a space in that attack for Mourinho to bring in somebody else. But that is the full list. You can see there who I would keep and who I would sell from this United squad. Quite a few players going, and I don't think any are unreasonable as far as I'm concerned. Do you agree with my keep list and my sell list? Who do you want to see sold that I haven't said? Who do you want to keep that I've said to sell? Let me know in the comments below as always. This should be an interesting debate. But it's clearly going to be a busy summer for Manchester United. And these are the players I think should be leaving the club.